HBC Boom. I'm so glad to see you again. You know, we're learning so much about God and what he wants from us. You know, God wants us to believe. He wants us to have faith in him, have faith in his word, have faith in everything that God says. You know, even in the Bible days, the apostles had to have faith in order to preach and teach the people. There was a man who was an apostle named Peter. And after Jesus had died and arose and went to heaven, Peter was out preaching and teaching just like the other apostles. And while Peter was in a town called Joppa, he preached and many souls, many people came to Christ. And he went up on the roof to pray. And after he prayed, he felt so hungry. And God showed him a vision. A sheep came down from heaven with all kinds of animals on it. And God told him to eat the meat of those animals. And Peter said, no. I have never put anything unclean in my mouth. And God told him again. He said no. And the third time that God spoke to him and told him to eat, Peter understood. And Peter did what God told him to do because God said don't call anything that I have cleansed unclean. And around that same time, there were some men that came to the house and they were looking for Peter. They were sent by Cornelius all the way in Caesarea. And they said they wanted Peter to come to Cornelius' house. And so the next morning they left and they traveled for a day until they got to Caesarea. And when Peter got there, he spoke with Cornelius and his family. He taught them, he preached to them, and everyone in Cornelius' house was saved. But do you know that at that time, because Romans and Jewish people did not, congregate. Jewish people were not even allowed to go into the house of a Roman. Cornelius was a Roman. But because Peter had that vision that God showed him, he would never call Cornelius unclean or anyone because he knew that God loves everybody. God loves us all. It doesn't matter who we are or where we come from. And so everyone in Cornelius' house was saved. And then Peter understood that he was supposed to teach and preach to everybody. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Let's listen to the lesson and see what else we can learn about faith and believing. I'll see you soon. Hey there, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of someone who was introduced to a pretty unusual menu. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith, which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Sometimes that means making a move. What's this for? What's happening? Oh, please tell me there's a plan. Have a little faith, mon ami. Please be my guest. Oh, well, thank you. Welcome to the Taste Tour International. The what? The Test Tour International! Say that! The International 
The International Taste Tour. It just sounds better the other way. Oh, it also sounds like fun. We shall travel the globe with our taste buds. Where to first? Ethiopia. Oh, I'm ready. Voila. Uh, what am I looking at? This is Monsieur Watt, served with injera. That's great, but what is it? Oh, this is a spicy red lentil stew and a kind of sourdough flatbread. You know, the server doesn't usually steal food off the diner's plate. Try some. May I have a fork? Well, the bread is the eating utensil. Less dishes to wash that way. Oh, wow. So much flavor. This is really good. I'm a Seganalo. Uh, what? Oh, that just means thank you in Amharic. That's what they speak in Ethiopia. I need more. What's up next? Turkey. That's not a very adventurous food. Not the bird. Oh, the country. Voila. Wait, I know what this is. Um, uh, bala, uh, uh, baka. Bakalava, layers of phyllo pastry stuffed full of nuts and dripping with honey. Mmm. Light, crunchy, sweet, maybe too sweet? Ah, uh, no such thing. Here. Don't forget the Turkish coffee. Wow, I think I'm gonna be awake for a week. Hey, I've got one for you. Oh, well, where in the world are we? My friend brought this back from Australia. Oh, good eye, mate. It's called Vegemite. Huh. Looks kind of like Nutella. Yeah, you know, you might want to start with a small smear on a cracker with butter. Here, here. Oh. That was the saltiest thing I have ever eaten. It's kind of an acquired taste. Kind, it's kind of like a punch on the taste buds. Speaking of interesting taste, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the Book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly with the help of God's spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, they scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus to Jewish people everywhere they went. Many sick people were healed, and God's Spirit even helped Peter to raise a dead woman back to life. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. So, Peter and the other believers were doing incredible things through God's Spirit. They took the news of Jesus to towns and cities further and further from Jerusalem, like Joppa by the sea, where Peter stayed for a time with a leather worker named Simon. Now, so far, the believers had only shared Jesus with other Jewish people. After all, going inside the home of a Gentile or non-Jewish person was against a rule Jewish religious leaders had made. But God was already at work in the heart of a non-Jewish man living north along the coast in Caesarea. This man's name was Cornelius, and he was a Roman centurion. Cornelius gave generously to help people in need, and every day he prayed to God. One afternoon as he prayed, God said an angel, Cornelius, 
What is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon, a man who works with leather. His house is by the sea. When Luke recorded this story, he wrote that Cornelius was afraid. This was no cute Cupid for a Valentine card angel. Nope. This angel who spoke to Cornelius was huge and glorious and overwhelming. And as soon as the angel left, Cornelius did exactly as the angel said, sending two servants and a God-believing soldier to Joppa to find Peter. While these men were making the trip down to Joppa, Peter was up on the rooftop overlooking the sea. He was hungry, and as he waited for the meal to be prepared, he spent his time praying. Lord, what do you have for me today? As Peter prayed, God gave him a vision. Peter seemed to see a sheet being lowered down from heaven. And inside it, inside the sheet were dozens of animals that Jewish law said were unclean. As Peter watched in amazement, God spoke to him. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Now, Jewish people weren't allowed to touch these animals, much less cook them up for dinner. Surely not, Lord. I I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. Do not call anything that God has made unclean. As usual, Peter had responded with the first thing to enter his head. But God repeated these instructions twice more. Then, the sheet was taken back up into heaven. While Peter was still trying to wrap his mind around what had just happened, the three messengers from Cornelius arrived. God's spirits spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. The men explained about Cornelius' vision and why they had come. And slowly, Peter began to understand. God had just told him that nothing made by God is unclean, including people like Cornelius who weren't Jewish. So Peter invited the men into Simon's home. The next day, all of them, including some believers from Joppa, set out for Caesarea. When Peter arrived, Cornelius fell down at his feet as if to worship him. Stand up. I'm only a man myself. Then Peter entered the house. Okay, this was a huge deal. In fact, it might have been the first time Peter had ever been in the home of a non-Jewish person. Cornelius had invited all his relatives and friends to hear Peter. You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter a Gentile home. But God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. So when you sent for me, I came without asking any questions. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius explained the entire story of his vision and finished. Now we are all here and God is here with us. We are ready to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. I now realize how true it is that God treats everyone the same. He accepts people from every nation. He accepts anyone who has respect for him and does what is right. Peter shared the story of Jesus and how God had promised that the whole world would be saved through Jesus. All the prophets tell about him. They say that all who believe in him have their sins forgiven through his name. While Peter was still speaking, God's Spirit came and filled everyone who was listening. They began to speak in new languages and praise God. This was God's way of making it extra clear that Jesus was for these non-Jewish people too. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. All of Cornelius' family and friends were baptized, and Peter stayed with them for several days, continuing to share the amazing story of Jesus. The end. It's like how Jesus told his disciples to share the good news with the whole world. They just hadn't quite understood yet that Jesus meant everyone. So, what's our part in the story? Well, just like Peter, we have certain ways that we have always seen the world and the people around us. And it's so easy to put these people into boxes. People who are different from us. People who annoy us. People we just don't understand. Yeah. What we're tempted to do is just ignore these people, right? Or, or judge them for not being more like us. But when you choose to follow Jesus, he gives you new vision. You realize that every single person is made in God's image and is incredibly valuable. And they deserve to hear about Jesus too. That's right. Jesus can help you look past categories and labels. So this week, pay attention to how you see people.
when you talk with someone, remind yourself that this person you're talking to is made in God's image. Someone Jesus loves deeply. You can even tell them if you get the chance. Yeah, I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. God can change the way you see others. Which is pretty incredible. Want to try again? In a weird way, I do. So? My taste buds are still considering, but much better. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. How was it? Terrible. You want a piece? No. Nah. No, 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 come on. We'll get you a nice... No, Z, I really already ate. Nice. I'm good. No, no, I already ate. chips. Oh, hey guys. Hey, Kellen. Hey, we were just eating plantains too. Great minds think alike. Now, are we thinking the same thing for what we should do next? Uh, learn a Bible story from you? We are on a roll. Hey! Our story today comes from the book of Acts chapter 10. At this point, Jesus had already completed his time here on earth, and many people believed in him, forming the early church. Now, one thing you need to know is that back then, it was against Jewish law for Jews to associate with people who were not Jewish. Hmm. Okay, got it. Great. Let's jump in. Starting at the house of a Roman commander named Cornelius, he was a Gentile or a non-Jewish person. 
Cornelius and his family were faithful and worshiped God. He was generous to people in need and prayed often to God. One afternoon, he had a vision and saw an angel of God. Cornelius! What, what, what is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. He has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa and have them bring back a man named Peter. Servants! Godly soldier, come! I have a mission for you. Peter had been one of Jesus' closest friends and disciples when Jesus was on earth. Now, Peter was one of the leaders of the early church. And while Cornelius was sending men to find him, Peter was having his own vision from God. God, thank you for this beautiful day. You were so faithful and loving. Mm, I'm so hungry. I wonder what they are making for lunch downstairs. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. No, Lord, I will not. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Do not say that anything is not pure that God has made clean. This back and forth between Peter and the voice happened three times. Then the sheet was taken back up to heaven. What could this mean? The animals Peter saw were considered unclean by Jewish law. So you can imagine why he would be confused. Now, while Peter was thinking about the vision, the men Cornelius sent arrived at the house. The Holy Spirit spoke to Peter and told him to go with them. So Peter did. When Peter arrived at Cornelius' house, Cornelius fell at his feet as a sign of respect. Stand up. I am only a man myself. Thank you for coming. I have invited all my relatives and close friends to meet you and hear what you have to say. Hey, Peter. Hello. Hey, hey. Well, hey come on. Thanks for coming. Hey. hey hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello. Peter spoke to the people and he explained to them how it was against the Jewish law for him to be with the Gentiles. But he remembered his vision from God and realized that God wanted him to treat everyone the same. God accepts people from every nation. He accepts anyone who has respect for him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. This was a huge deal. Because previously, Peter thought he couldn't even be friends with Gentiles. But God helped him see things differently. Peter told them all about Jesus. All the prophets speak of Jesus. They say that all who believe in him have their sins forgiven through his name. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit came on all those who heard the message. Yeah, hallelujah! Woo! Praise God! Praise God! This is amazing. I have never felt like this before. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Oh, thank you, Peter. Won't you stay a few more days with us? Of course. And first thing on the agenda for my visit, for you to all be baptized in the name of Jesus. Woohoo! Everyone there was baptized. God changed the way Peter viewed people who were different from him. And after staying with Cornelius for a few days, he went on to teach people everywhere that faith in Jesus was for everyone. The end. Mm. Thanks, Kellen. That's amazing. I, I love that Peter was willing to let God change the way he thought about the Gentiles. Yeah, me too. I mean, if he didn't let them learn about Jesus, I wonder if we would have ever learned about him today. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely makes the message hit close to home when you realize how much it affects you personally. Totally. God's plan all along was to give everyone access through Jesus, no matter who someone is or where someone's from. God loves every person, and Jesus came to be a savior to all people. That is seriously good news. Yes. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Kellen. God never had to change his mind about people. God loved everyone all along. Yeah, you know, earlier today, I was being a little judgmental of the food you were eating. And obviously, food is different than people, but I think sometimes, without realizing it, I can be judgmental toward people, too. Oh, I know I can be. My mailman for one. Oh, 
Don't even get me started uh, with him! Well, maybe God will change the way you see him, just like with Peter. Yeah, I could use some help there. Oh. Yeah. What about you? Reveal the question! When have you changed your mind about someone? Hey, that is a great question. Mm -hmm. There are lots of times that our first impressions are wrong or, or that we need God's love to help see people the way God does. Yeah, it could be a sibling that used to annoy you, but you've learned to see how special they are. Or maybe a grown-up in your life who you thought wasn't very cool, but then learns they listen to the same music you listen hey, to. When, when you put your faith in Jesus, God can help change the way you see the people around you. So what about you? Talk it out, and we'll see you next time. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and this was the Zoe and Zoe Show! Bye! Oh, BC Boom, did you enjoy that lesson? I know that I surely did. We're learning so much about faith and believing. In Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we cannot see. We have to believe. We have to believe God's word, believe what God says, believe his promises. We have to believe that God knows all and that he loves us so much and he's here for us. And he wants us to know his word and understand who he is. We have to trust God and believe that he will never leave us nor forsake us. BC Boom, you have to know that God is here for you. He loves you, he cares, and he knows everything that we go through. We have to love him right back. And we show him our love by believing and having faith that God is always going to be there for us. He'll never turn his back on us. God loves us. Don't you love the Lord too? I know that I do. And I'm sure that you do too. BC Boom, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come again thanking you for another day, Lord. Thank you, God, for another BC boom. Lord, thank you, God, for another Bible lesson that's teaching us about you and who you are. Lord, we want to be just like you. We want to do the things that you would have us to do. Lord, we want to believe in everything that you say. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word because your word guides us. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, we see you through your word. Lord, we thank you for one day coming down, 42 generations to walk among men Lord, to teach us and to guide us and then to sacrifice yourself for us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving your life for us, for dying on the cross. But Lord, we thank you for raising up again, walking among men and then going to heaven. And you didn't stop there. But Lord, you did what you promised and you sent your heart Holy Ghost, to fill us up, Lord God. Lord, we lift our cup to you, Lord God. Fill us even more, Lord. Lord God, we thank you because you are so good to us and so merciful and so kind. You've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Lord, we're asking that you will continue, Lord, to watch over us, keep us safe, Lord, Bless us, Lord God, during this summer break, Lord, and get us prepared even for the next school year. Lord God, we ask that you would bless us this summer. Lord God, we ask that you would continue to watch over us, Lord God, and keep us safe. Lord God, we ask that you would bless our Sunday school, 
We ask that you would bless our church services, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done for us. And we ask that you will continue to bless us and will forever praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, BC Boom. We'll see you next time.